One of the most important aspects of the, or tools, of the immune system is phagocytosis. Now, phago means like mouth or to eat or something like that. Cyto means cells. So depending upon how you look at it, these this could either mean an eating cell or cell eating. And actually, both of them are pretty appropriate here because it's mostly cells eating other cells. Um, although they can eat things that aren't cells, and that's fine too. Um, this is one of the main tools that your immune system uses for a number of purposes, and I want to go a little bit into the process of phagocytosis. Uh, so, in general, these are the steps of phagocytosis. First, you have chemotaxis. The phagocyte has to have some way to find its way to the target, right? Often in the immune system, this is going to be because there's a chemical signal, a um, chemokine, uh, being secreted by some cell that's infected or that was attacked or that detected it or something like that, right? Um, there are lots of different chemokines. C5A is one uh, from the complement system, um, but there's a whole bunch of other ones as well, right? So once you've moved to the area, you need to recognize and attach to the cell that you're going to eat. Uh, some cells, uh, for instance, the um, the, the sentinel phagocytes, like monocytes, macrophages, den dendritic cells, can directly bind to them, um, through their, uh, PRRs, um, or they can directly bind to mannose on the surface of the cell, and, uh, others types of phagocytes uh, bind indirectly through opsonins. These would might be things like C3B from the complement system or a number of antibodies. Uh, and basically these are little like things that stick to the cells and that phagocytes can grab hold of and use to eat. Um, I should also point out that even though things that can bind, direct, bind directly often will bind even better if there are opsonins present. Then you engulf it, right? Pseudopods shoot out, surround the cell, and pull it inside. Um, and uh, once you have, like, eaten a thing... Uh, it is now going to be contained in a membrane sac called a phagosome. So then you have um, phagosome maturation and phagolysosome formation. Basically, your phagosome is going to merge with a lysosome, which is a digestive organelle, and that will form the phagolysosome. Basically, the cell is going to combine its stomach with the thing that it just ate, and then the thing that it just ate is going to be exposed to those digestive enzymes, which will cause it to be destroyed and digested. Kinda speaks for itself there. And then you've gotta get rid of the waste products. Like some of the stuff that you digest is gonna be useful stuff to eat. Sugars, proteins, things like that. But a lot of it is gonna be crap that the cell doesn't really have any use for. You gotta get rid of that and you get rid of that through exocytosis. You basically just spit it out of the cell. So visually, here's what we have going on. Um, you have some sort of chemotactic agent, well, in this case C5A, which is a, a chemokine, um, 
and that is going to attract our cell, our phagocyte, to the microbe. Um, and then the microbe will attach, or sorry, the, uh, the phagocyte will attach to the microbe. In this case, you see this is a bacterial cell coated with C3B, and this phagocyte is attaching to the C3B, which is an opsonin, and taking it inside. When it first takes it inside, it's inside of a phagosome. The phagosome combines with lysosomes that release their digestive enzymes, creating a phagolysosome. The digestive enzymes digest the whatever, and then you spit it out. Easy enough. Um, well, there are lots of cells that do phagocytosis, kind of like the kings of phagocytosis are macrophages and uh, neutrophils. And so macrophages are sentinel cells. They have those all-important uh, pathogen recognition receptors. Uh, they also can recognize opsonins, and that will help them. Um, but they go around and, like, they collect garbage. So, like, the, your dead cells that just die sometimes. Uh, those will get eaten up by macrophages. Macrophages will just find, like, protein, debris, you know, little bits of protein that got damaged or whatever, misfolded, or just old. Um, and they destroy invaders. Macrophages... Um, start out as monocytes in the blood, and then the macrophages migrate out of the blood into the tissues, or sorry, the monocytes migrate out of the blood into the tissues, and they develop into macrophages during that process. Um, they maintain TLRs on their surface uh, and detect invaders. If they do detect an invader, they eat it, they produce cytokines in response. These cytokines will often activate basophils or mast cells to produce uh, histamine and other inflammatory responses. Macrophages uh, can become activated macrophages, which increase their power, and that happens due to cytokines. Um, but they can also, like a bunch of macrophages, can fuse together to form a giant cell, um, which is kind of what it sounds like. It's a giant macrophage. Um, and if that isn't enough, then you can have macrophages, giant cells, and T cells all gathered together to form something called a granuloma. Granulomas are something that you form when there is some pathogenic thing that you can't fight off. Maybe it's a biofilm, it's gotten, it, it's resistant to phagocytosis. Maybe it's, um, you know, a parasite that's too big. Maybe it's a tumor. Either way, this is a last ditch effort to contain the damage. And you like have all of these cells that basically form a wall around it and calcify. Um, do they like become hard? Uh, and, and the idea is like, we're going to encapsulate this dangerous thing, this pathogen or this cancer, and hopefully at least stop it from spreading. Um, so this prevents the escape of the organism, but you basically like walled off a section of your body that now no longer works. Uh, the other main phagocyte is neutrophils. Uh, neutrophils are not sentinel cells. They don't have toll-like receptors. Um, and, however, they, and so they mostly uh, bind to opsonins like C3B or um, antibodies or things like that. Uh, they're very quick to be recruited to a site of damage. Um, they are more powerful than macrophages but they don't last as long. Um, uh, as mentioned before, they can kill via phagocytosis or their granules, and they can also expel their DNA to make this net. It's actually called a net uh, for a neutrophil extracellular trap. 
but really that was an acronym that people came up with because they thought it sounded cool to have an acronym that says NETS for something that was clearly a net. Um, but that catches microbes and slows them down, allowing other things to get in and kill them. 